Heavenly Father, we thank you for such a day like this. We thank, we thank you for the sunshine. We thank you for the rain. We thank you for the light. We thank you for the, for the midnight. We thank you, Lord, for everything we go through in life. Because we know all things work together for good. For those who are called by the Lord, those who are called according to your purpose, we pray that, Lord, today it will be a time, a day, a period of praising the Lord all the rest of our lives in Jesus' name. Lord, we're committing ourselves to you. There will be no complaints today. There will be no conflict today. And there will no combat with anybody today in Jesus' name. We we'll pray that the love of God will bring the joy of the Lord to the very surface of the heart of everyone in Jesus' name. And as we rejoice before you, as we praise your name, as we glorify you, great, mighty, marvelous things will be taking place in Jesus' name. Put your praise in every heart. The glory of the Lord will fall and the power of the Lord will be known. And Lord, we pray no situation will remain the same in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Before you sit there, everybody give me another amen. Thank you very much. We're looking at something very peculiar today. You know, many people, when they read their Bibles, they never are able to get anything, anything new. Anything special? Anything peculiar from the word of God? That's the reason, by the way, why many people, they read the Bible every day, they study the Bible every week, and they listen to messages and preaching almost every time. And yet, their lives never change. Their situations remain the same because they never change anything, whatever they read, but today, we're going to change a lot of things. I said we're going to change a lot of things. The situation in your life, the peculiarity in your life, the perplexity in your life. How does everything turn around? How do you know that today you are starting, it's like there's sorrow, you want to move to joy. There's sickness, you want to move to health. There's bondage, you want to move to deliverance. There's imprisonment, you want to move to dominion. How do you make that transition in your life? You know, the thing people know is that we've turned Christianity in this continent of Africa. We've turned Christianity into a region of pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. And I think it's, you know, as I look at the church, I'm not just talking about this church deeper life, I'm talking about the church at large. Uh, you know a lot of things that the people of the world who do not read their Bibles, what they are brought in. I say a lot of things that the people have brought in into the church. And then the things that are there, especially in the Acts of the Apostles, which is the story of the church. The story of the church on the move. The story of the church triumphant. A lot of things there, many people do not understand. And I want to bring to attention of those things. I'm sure you've read this before. I'm sure you've learned this before. I'm sure you, you've had messages on this before. But as I read this, what do I see? Let's come to Acts of the Apostle chapter 16. Acts of the Apostle chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 20. It says, and brought them to the magistrate, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city. And they teach customs, which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. And the first thing I notice here is that they brought Paul and Silas before the magistrates. And the one reason they gave is this Paul and Silas, they're teaching something different, something strange, something not according to their custom, something not according to their law. And they said, in particular, because we are Romans. Well, when you have the word of the word Romans, I want you to look at verse 36. In verse 36, and the keeper of the prison told this. 
saying to Paul, the magistrates have sent to let you go. Now, therefore, depart and go in peace. Have you ever read where somebody was put in prison unlawfully? And then the magistrates thinking through, they said, okay, let those people go. If you were, what will you do? You run out immediately. You say, praise the Lord. And Paul was not in a hurry to run out of the prison. Did you ever think about that? Imprisonment is not a good thing. Restriction is not a good thing. I mean, hell, the stores overnight is not a good thing. Now you can go. Look at what Paul said in verse 37. But Paul said unto them, They are beating us openly, uncondemned. Being Romans, being Romans. I'm saying, Paul, what did he to tell them when they said they were Romans? What did he tell them? Hey, big deal. I'm a Roman too. I was born there. I have the same citizenship as you. And then you would have been free. No, he said. We don't tell them. Or God does not allow us to tell them. But no, if you are told them you are Roman, they would not have done that to you. He said, it doesn't matter. God has a purpose for taking me into that prison. And now that the purpose has been fulfilled, I can now tell them I am a Roman Jew. And then they have cast us into the prison. And now do they thrust us out privately, privately? Nay, verily, but let them come themselves and fetch us out. Verse 38. And the sergeants told these words unto the magistrates, and they feared when they heard that they, both Silas and Paul, were Romans. We learned something there that you're not too quick to get out of trouble and give all the reasons why this should not be happening to you. Because if you allow everything going on to happen, you'll find a miracle you wouldn't have discovered if you didn't go into the prison. The situation happening to you today, if it didn't happen, you're not seeing some miracles. And the predicament you're going through, and the restriction you're going through, and the bad, bad things you think are happening. Why is this happening? Why is this happening? Why is this happening? If those things did not happen, you'll not have the record of Acts chapter 16. You'll not have the miracle that, are, that is recorded here. We learn a lesson. Don't jump out. Don't hurry up. And then run away from that situation. Let what is happening happen. And say, Lord, you must have something to print out of this. To bring out of this condition. I'm coming back to verse 22. And the multitude rose up together against them. And the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when that lich many strives upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stalks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas did what? Tell me out loud. Preach. And then did what? Are you there? And did what? And sang praises unto God. And the prisoners had them. You know what? I know some people... They only sing in church. They don't sing at home. I know some people, they only sing in good times. They don't sing in bad times. I know some people, they only sing in, at noon. When the sun is shining. When everything is bright. When there is prosperity. They don't sing in the midnight. When there is adversity. Where there is persecution, where there is opposition. By the way, 
this is the only singing I find in the Acts of the Apostles. You, you look at Acts chapter 1, there was prayer meeting, but no singing. You look at Acts chapter 2, there was the outpouring of the Spirit of God, but no singing. You look at chapter 3, there was miracle, but no singing. You look at chapter 4, there is this extensive prayer, and the whole church came together. And there was no singing, and no drumming either. You know, a lot of things that have come into the church. The disco that has come to the church. The dancing that has come to the church. The pop house night club music that has come into the church. And they think, we cannot have a prayer meeting except there is drumming and dancing. And they think, we cannot have a night vigil in the church without drumming and singing. And dancing a lot of things that those people that were musicians in the world before and then they've come into the church they say they are born again and they're changing virtually everything in the church but here we have in the prison in the midnight then they sang you sing like that when things are down when the night has come and when your feet are in the stocks, and when it appears everything has turned over against you, that is the time to pray and to sing. And then it says, I'm going to read that verse 25 again. And at midnight, Paul and Silas, no, they didn't murmur. Paul and Silas, no, they didn't complain. Paul and Silas, no, they didn't cry. Paul and Silas, they were not afraid of their enemies, of their persecutors. They prayed and they sang praises unto God. And the prisoners had them. And suddenly, everybody says, suddenly. You know, when you sing at home, when the landlord is making his usual trouble, and you sing. When your wife is, you know, cooking up some things and making some fire. Not fire in the kitchen, fire in the living room and fire in the bedroom. Wait to sing. And when the children are here and there, and it appears to say, Mommy or Daddy, this is not going to happen. We're going to be in charge. We're going to take control. And then you sing. Don't cry. That is the time to sing. When your trials are greatest, when your situations are kind of bleak and black, you don't know what to do. When everything becomes almost unsol unsolvable, and ungovernable. That is the time to sing in the midnight of life. When things are tough and when things are difficult, you pray and you sing. And you say, Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaking. And immediately, and immediately, what happened? All the doors were open. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. You know, I know some people that think that, you know, when there's trouble, trouble for the minister, trouble for the preacher, trouble for the apostle, trouble for the missionaries, you know, it will close doors. And they're sending prayer requests home. And they're saying, headquarters church, pray for us. The doors are about to close. Because you know what? We have trouble here. We have persecution here, we have trial here, we have this one here, we have that one here. The doors are going to close. I say, no, read your Bible again. That when the adversaries come up, and when the adversities multiply, it's when more doors will open. Read Revelation chapter 2, chapter 3. You'll find out that it says, yes, I know what they say. And I know what they do. And I know the kind of pressure, persecution they are bringing upon you. Those of the synagogue of Satan. And yet it says, I've set before you an open door which nobody can close. Never you think again. The persecution will close your door. Your doors will open. 
Never you seek again. That adversity or trouble. Or you know, this one is making trouble. That one is making trouble. It means my ministry is over. There's trouble everywhere. There's adversity everywhere. There is oppression. My feet are put in stalls. In fact, the laws of the land, they bring restriction upon my life. And now ministry is all over. Lord Jesus, come. Now there's nothing else for me to do. All the doors are closing. No, begin to sing and your songs will open doors. I said your songs will open doors. In fact, you know, I told you that this is the only kind of singing I find in the New Testament. I, that is, I find in Acts of the Apostles. That if the singing is right, the singing should open the hearts of the people. Should open the door of faith into the hearts of people. The kind of singing, even the singing we have in church. The kind of singing that closes the door. The door to preaching. And the door to miracle. And the door to joy. And the door to happiness. The kind of singing that closes the door. That you will not find in the Bible. Every time you sing. And you sing in the spirit of the Lord. With the power of the Lord. Doors will open. And I pray your doors will open. I said your doors will open. By the way. Listen. Here are apostles singing. Not choir, not choir, not choir. Here is Apostle Paul. And here is Silas. And they were, their feet were in the stalls. Some things were called bad things that happened to them. And then those apostles, they sang, If the church will come back to Bible days. When apostles sing, it's a different thing. When prophets sing, it's a different thing. And when people have anointing, power, authority, when they sing, it's a different thing. And when I sing, your doors will open. You, you know, some people, they think now, Pastor, you are the GS, the general superintendent, the apostle of the church. Give the singing to those who are supposed to sing. And you preach and pray. I say, no, let's go back to the Bible. If we go back to the Bible, the apostles sang, the apostles preached, and the apostles prayed. And their singing will open your door in Jesus' name. Let's come back now. It says, and everyone's bands were loosed. Deliverance for you today. Dominion for you today. Healing for you today. Ability and courage and power for your hour has come upon your life today in Jesus' name. Prevailing power of prayer and praise. Prevailing power of prayer and praise. Prayer is a mighty force, a great force. But not prayer with panic, not prayer with perplexion perplexity no prayer with fear no prayer with doubt no prayer with i don't know what's going to happen no prayer with watching the faces of people no prayer with opening your eyes and closing your eyes and looking at the time i mean prayer prayer that is released from a free heart and prayer that comes out is pouring out of the earth no prayer with complaint no prayer with criticism. No prayer with thinking this and thinking that. A prayer that just releases you and releases everything within you unto the Lord. That's the kind of prayer we are going to pray today. When the people of God, when they pray and they sing unto the Lord. That's why Paul the Apostle said, I will pray in the Spirit. I'll pray with understanding. And Paul the Apostle, remember an Apostle, he said, I will sing in the Spirit. And I will pray with, I will seek with understanding. And it is that kind that breaks every yoke. It's that kind that brings anointing down. And that anointing will come today in Jesus' name. But you know, look up here, look up here. I'm just trying to help you. When the apostles sing and you criticize in your heart, you close your own door that's about to open. 